Howdy, my name is Patrick Blankenship. I'm with Cardinal Scale Manufacturing. And this is our LSP series scale. Um, today, what we're gonna be demonstrating is a technical overview of our 225 mobile livestock indicator along with this LSP series scale and some of the technical issues and kind of questions that we commonly get with this scale. So one of the first things we have to do with this scale is go ahead and open up the side here. So here we have these two rubber mounts on the left and right side. We take the, the, the top hinge here and we're gonna lift up and we're gonna let it swing back. Now right here, we do have a little pin that we're gonna wanna go ahead and line up. So if I move this back a little bit. And then go ahead and put that pin in there. You can, and essentially we've got a pin on the left and right side that we wanna line up. Essentially what this is gonna allow us to do is just open up to our, our weight indicator. This top drawer folds down, so now we have a nice little working space. We have access to our indicator. So whenever you get your LSP series scale and open up the 225 livestock wear, you're gonna have the power cord nice and bundled up here. You're also gonna have some the printer manual and along with anything that came in the box with the printer. Um, you're also gonna have a test ticket here. And essentially this is just showing that it was verified that the printer was working whenever it left the factory. Um, and essentially what we wanna do is just either take this, this information and set it to the side or leave it in here. But we're gonna go ahead and hook up the power to our, uh, our weight indicator here. So one last thing to note about the, the operation of this indicator is we do have a reprint function that will reprint the last transaction that was done on this. Um, so it's just as simple as having paper loaded into the printer and pressing reprint. We also have a USB that is stored under a dust resistant cap. And so once we move this cap out of the way, there is a USB-A port there and then we can install our USB into the indicator. Now, if the USB is not installed, the transactions are not going to be written and stored to the USB. So if you're wanting transactions to be stored in that CSV, or CSV file format, then make sure your USB is installed before your transactions start. Um, a lot of times um, we might have issues where information is not stored to a USB, um, and this is because our USB is not FAT32 formatted and it might be above eight gigabytes or so. If you have any issues with your USB not storing data, uh, we recommend that you go ahead and give us a call. Um, we can walk you through different steps on how to format, format the flash drive or um, just figuring out why data is not getting stored to your USB. Turning on the 225 for the first time. So initially you're gonna notice that the scale is set to negative 2,980 pounds or some random number here. Now, the reason for this is because the scale is still in transport mode um, with no weight being applied to the load cells themselves. So that way there's no shock loads whenever this, uh, this scale is actually transported. Um, you'll notice that our shrink, our total, all these averages are set to zero because this scale has not been used at all. Uh, trans number is two at this moment. Um, we're gonna go ahead and show you here in a moment how to change that back to one. Um, just for this demonstration purpose right now, we've already done our test ticket that is provided with the scale itself. And then also we wanna show um, how to reset that trans number. So that way if you're starting over for a new lot or if you wanna to begin over from the beginning, you can, you can do that. So right now we have this LSP in transport mode. Now we need this in weigh mode in order to actually get a live weight from the indicator. Um, the reason why we have a transport mode is to make sure no shock load is applied to the load cells in transportation. So this can either be from road noise or whenever this scale is lifted up by a crane to be put into place. Um, essentially, all you need to do is just move these levers to the inside and this makes sure that they're not actually going to be hit by any sort of gates or anything when we're in uh, way operation. So one note to make here is we have these gas shocks. So when the scale is actually in weigh mode, it allows the scale, the weigh bridge, to move around a little bit. So that is normal. One thing to note is when we turn on the 225 here, we have our Cardinal logo, and this shows the, this, the LCD revision, and then also the software revision. So in this case, it is the 225-USA-Livestock. Um, and then below that, you will see the current revision model um, for this indicator. 
Um, it's good to keep note of what uh, revision you have on your scale, just in case you have to give us a call and that'll kind of help us troubleshoot and figure out what's going on if you have to call into tech support. So with this LSP1513-MWC225P, um, we are only allowed to weigh at up to a 5% tilt angle. Now the reason why 5% is that magic number is that is the maximum tilt angle allowed by INTEP. So in order for this scale to stay illegal for trade, we're only allowed to have a 5% tilt angle. So this indicator is equipped with a inclinometer to actually determine whether or not our scale is meeting that calibrated angle. So one of the first things I wanna take a look at is our, sh is our shrink feature. So we do have the ability to add a shrink. So if, for example, we know about uh, 2% of the total gross weight is just going to go ahead and be lost there. We can go ahead and enter 2% and hit enter. And so now you can see our shrink value set up here. So if we're ready to weigh some livestock here, we're gonna go ahead and press the weigh feature. It's gonna go ahead and ask us our head count. So in this case, I'm just gonna use an arbitrary number of four. So I'm gonna say I have four cattle on the scale. Now, as you notice, once I hit print, the printer went ahead and started printing. I don't know if you could hear that or not. And here you can see we have a total head count of four. Our weight is zero pounds because we had no weight applied to the scale and our average weight. You can see that our, our date and time along with our transaction number. So if we wanted to mull, uh, weigh multiple cattle in the same group, we're gonna just go ahead and continue pressing the weigh, counting the number of cattle on the scale and then pressing enter and making sure we have printer or printer paper inside the printer each time. So there are various types of printer paper we can use here, but generally anything within that three and a half inch range that'll actually fit into the TMU 295. And please refer to the TMU 295 manual when um, actually selecting your printer paper here. So whenever I'm finished with this group here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the finish button. And then it'll go ahead and print out the total for that ticket. If you would like to change your transaction number, you can see after we did that second transaction, we are now on trans number three. So we press the time and date button. It's gonna go ahead and bring up our time that we have entered into the scale. It's gonna go ahead and bring our date. Now this uses a um, standard uh, date or month date year format. Um, then go ahead and press enter again. And now this will allow us to select our transaction number. Um, Ideally, we would just go ahead and allow this to count sequentially, um, but sometimes it's understandable that, you know, during on a certain day, we want to start over at one, or if this scale is replacing another scale, we might want to jump that transaction number to 304. So in this situation, I'm going to go ahead and change this one back to one, and then just press enter. And once we go ahead and enter there, you will see that that transaction number hasn't been entered to one. So some of the most common questions we have with the 225 livestock wear application is sometimes uh, we run into an issue where we will have a error come up on the screen where it's telling us our tilt angle is wrong. And essentially what we wanna do at that point is make sure that our inclinometer is actually calibrated to a level surface. Um, sometimes the inclinometers themselves can go bad and they will give us this error consistently. Um, however, most of the time it's because the scale has either settled or it's just outside of the actual INTEP, INTEP tolerance. Um, so to actually go in and set up your, and calibrate your uh, inclinometer, it's the same way as kind of going in and setting up and calibrating your scale. You'll just go ahead and go into the setup and review menu, press one to enter our setup menu. And we're gonna go down to setup menu number three. Now here we have a couple different things. We have our number four is our USB-A option card. Now this is actually for just setting up any, any parameters we have on our USB-A option card for our exports. Um, please refer to the 2XX USB-A manual for any information there. And then we have our Cal angle. Now the Cal angle is actually very specific to our um, livestock wearer app as it's required to have that um, tilt angle. So we have three options here. So we can change our pitch, our roll, and our and, our, and we can go ahead and set our default cal angle. One last note is the default calibration ang or angle cal, that is going to be our uh, zero, zero. So that'll bring us back to a level weight. 
So for some reason, you need to access the back of the 225 to either uh, make changes to a USB-A option card or to even add in a peripheral like a scoreboard or something to the outside of the indicator. You're gonna have these bolts here on the side that you'll have to get out or take out in order to allow this whole enclosure here to swing out. Um, and this will let you make any changes to the back of the 225 board that are necessary. So coming out of the, the right side of the mobile livestock wear, um, you have this gray piece of conduit that actually encloses our home run cable, as we would normally call it on any of our scales. And down here, we have our junction box. So this is where all four load cells will come together and allow us to have an easy access to do testing to actually determine whether or not we have good load cells or bad load cells. Um, believe it or not, this is probably one of the most common questions we have on this scale, just because these tend to be in a dirty environment where these things get uh, covered in mud and people don't actually know where their junction boxes are. So it's this, this little box right down here and there's two bolts on the left and right side that will allow you to take this cover off to get access to the junction box. So just for reference, these are 9 16 bolts they are going to be taking out here on the left and right side. So once we have that front metal cover off, we have our watertight junction box here enclosed with four Phillips head screws. And once we have this junction box open, you're going to see right down here we have our four load cell connections and we also have our single home run cable. Now this top connection here actually goes back to our indicator and so we have four wires that are connected right here. We have our black, our green, our white, and our red. So black and green is gonna be our excitation pair. And then red and white is going to be our signal wires going back to the indicator. And that is the same color code that we use on all of our, um, all of our load cell cables as well. So now taking a closer look at the load cells themselves, these are held on, or this has a cover that's held on by three. Uh, bolts. They are the same size bolt as the junction box cover. That's that 9 16 bolt. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is there's the lock washer on there as well to help keep, in the, keep these from loosing off. So once we have all those bolts taken off, the cover is just there. Take, it, take that cover off and set it off to the side here. So now you can see we have this single S-type load cell that's actually inside this enclosure for our LSP. Now you can notice this pin down here. Um, now when this, this is in a weigh mode, force is being applied. So the weight of the scale itself is being applied to this load cell here. Now in the event that a load cell needs to be replaced in this scale, uh, First and foremost, the scale itself, the weight of the scale needs to be taken off this a load cell. Um, ideally, this is gonna be by actually jacking up the weigh bridge itself to make sure the weight of the weigh bridge is weighing on a jack. Um, please make sure you follow all of the safety guidelines that we light out inside the manual um, whenever you're changing one of these load cells. Um, and essentially the wires that actually go back to the junction box are ran inside of the square tubing um, through the channel, through the, through the, to the, to the junction box itself. Um, the outside load cells, so the load cells on the other side of the scale, um, they run through the tubing um, channel along the outsides. So this is what it looks like whenever we're taking it into transport mode. And this is what it looks like when we're putting it inside of Wait. So when it comes to a load cell replacement, um, what we're going to have to do is obviously have this front cover plate taken off. We've also got one, two, three, four bolts, and this handle is going to have to be removed. There's also a 916 bolt on the left here and, and on the right here for this uh, stainless steel cover plate. Um, essentially, once we have this cover plate disconnected, um, with the lever in transport mode, the weight of the load cell, there is no weight on the load cell, so we're able to snake the load cell off the front of these cams and essentially snake it out through the bottom or through the top. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is we are obviously going to have to have our load cell disconnected at the junction box there 
and it's recommended whenever you're actually pulling the, if you have to pull a load cell and you're pulling the old wires out, to go ahead and either take a, a piece of string or the wire, another wire to actually feed through the rails. So that way, whenever you're ready to install your new load cell, you can use that wire or piece of string to pull your new load cell cable back through the frame and you're not fighting and trying to fish your, your, your cable through the frame. If we're actually trying to test individual load cells, we're gonna go ahead and wanna take the white and red wire, so that's our signal minus is white, signal plus is red. We're gonna wanna disconnect these and actually connect them to a multimeter and actually read the millivolt output. So you wanna make sure you have a very good multimeter when you're actually trying to read millivolts. Um, now, whenever we're reading the millivolts, we will have the indicator on, so that way supply voltage is actually uh, being supplied to the load cells. Um, and this will kind of give us a general idea of if we've got a load cell that's um, just kind of out of range or might be causing some issues. Um, usually what we'll notice or what we'll see on these is we might have an analog low or an analog a higher. Um, and that's usually because we have a wire that's disconnected. Occasionally that can indicate we have a bad load cell. Um, if we have an overcapacity error, especially whenever the, the whenever we have weight applied to the scale, that means our zero has shifted. And so we want to make sure that we actually just recalibrate the scale and usually that's the quickest fix. And if we ever see a error A to D, that generally determines that we have actually something wrong with the indicator itself. Um, the last way and kind of like the final check on these load cells that we want to look at is um, if we'll check the resistance values. Now generally most multimeters have the resolution to actually check resistance values. So you'll actually disconnect the load cell completely from the system. Now, whenever you disconnect the excitation wires, you wanna make sure your indicator is powered down. But um, we're gonna check the, um, we're gonna check the um, excitation pair, so the green and black, and then the signal pair. Now, what we're looking for there is a ohm value, so our resistance value. And we want to record every value for the every load cell and compare them to each other. Now, for these specific load cells, um, and you'll have to check with tech support on the exact values that you want for the exact model load cell. This depends on whether or not you have the 15,000 pound version of the LSP or the 20,000 pound version. Um, what values we'll see here, but um, pretty much what we wanna see is essentially the same resistance value for each load cell. Now, if for some reason um, we are still having issues and even though the millivolt reading uh, value comes back and also our, um, our uh, resistance value comes back as a good value, what we'd expect, we might wanna double check our home run cable, make sure nothing's happened here. Um, and very, very rarely do we ever have issues with this board itself. Um, it's not common at all for our junction board to actually have any issues unless for some reason this has been submerged in water, um, which you know does come across our table some time to time whenever these, um, these scales have uh, been under water. The load cells themselves won't usually get damaged, but um, it's mainly this junction board. Now, this, this junction board does have a gasket that's actually in the, the door itself that's supposed to help keep out most water. But if for some reason there's like a hurricane or like a river flood where the scales uh, submerge for long periods of time, um, some, sometimes water can get in here and cause some uh, damage. So one important note to have here is our usual load cell configuration for this is going to be load cell one, the load cell closest to the indicator, load cell two on the other end, and then load cell three on the same side as the indicator, and load cell four. So that means that we have our odds on the same side as the indicator, and then our evens on the opposite side. You should always remember that load cell one is usually what we use for the load cell that's closest to the indicator. Now keep in mind the junction box doesn't really care which load cells where. However, it might help you try to kind of figure out which load cell to pull when you're playing with wiring in the junction box. On the inside of the scales here, we do have our, our lifting brackets for actually moving the scale around. Right now, this scale is in its transport mode, so we have these bolted to the scale. So whenever you actually go into a weigh mode, this is actually set up for weighment of cattle. 
you can either leave these here, but most people tend to take these out just because they don't want any of their animals to get snagged on them right here. Thank you for watching this video on our LSP series scales. If you ever have any questions, feel free to call into tech support. We can go ahead and send you a copy of the manual. Um, we can also provide you with part numbers and other information regarding this scale. So if you ever have any questions about models and options, feel free to give us a call because the configuration that you saw here in this video is not the only way we can equip this scale. We might also have a DC battery version, um, just a bunch of different options that might interest you. So my name is Patrick once again. The tech support phone number is 1-866-254-8261. Thank you. Have a good day.